Continuing on with our same smoking ban example, we want to know the probability of obtaining X equals 548 or fewer adult Americans that support a ban on public smoking out of a sample of 1009. Okay, well remember, for every single graph on this page, we already determined the center back a page ago and that it was 0.58. That never changes. <laughs> Once you establish that for the problem, I mean, it'll change in the next problem, but for this problem, it's always 0.58. So I'm actually just drawing it on all three of my graphs here, right? The mean of the p-hats is 0.58 right there. All right, now the trick is, where is x equals 548? And the answer is, we don't know, because we need to figure out what this is in terms of a p hat. So we need to find p hat, which is x over n. That would be 548 divided by n, which was, of course, 1009. That's our sample size. So we take 548 and we divide it by 1009, and we'll know where this is. So let's see, 548 divided by 1009 tells us 54.3%, so 0.543. I mean, of course, we're rounding a little bit, but that's okay. This little calculation we're doing, by the way, it's very easy, but we're going to use it a lot in chapters 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's a nice little one to star, right, because we need to know that. Okay, so I know that 0.543 is over here somewhere. So I'm going to put p hat and say 0.543. That's my labeling. And then I'm going to shade to the left over here. Now, it asks right in the problem, it says the word probability. So if we grab our decision matrix, I'm going to grab this one right here. If we want to know want to find probability, we're going to use normal CDF, lower comma upper comma P comma, um, well, the square root of P times Q over N. Right? Okay, so let's see here. Normal CDF, the left hand edge, the lower edge is negative one E99. The upper edge, well, at this point, it's a little bit tricky. It's better for us to actually use the fraction. It'll be more accurate than if we use 0.543 because we round it for that 0.543. So it's easier a little bit if you use the fraction there. We do know that this is 0.58, right? Because that hasn't changed for the problem. And this was, oh, I've got to go grab it. <laughs> it was 0.01. Five five three eight. We found it on the previous page, so zero point zero one five five three eight, like that. All right. So now we can type that into a calculator or into StatCrunch, either one. So second distribution, normal CDF, negative one second comma, or to get that e in there, ninety nine. And then type the fraction, 548 divided by 1009. It'll just be more accurate than using 0.543. You still want to figure out the 0.543 because it helps you know if it's on the left or the right side of what you're doing. Um, and it was on the left. And we see it's 0 0.008. So actually, our graph was a little off because I kind of have too much shaded here. But nevertheless. But in in spirit, it still holds together. Let's see about StatCrunch, because StatCrunch will tell us how good or bad we are. I want to be less than, and it was 0.543. Enter. There you can see it was really tiny. So it's a little bit smaller than what I have shaded. That's okay. That's not the end of the world. As long as what I have shaded is kind of close. Sorry. You're seeing my Hawaii background there. All right. So 0 0.0088. Pretty small. Less than 1%. So this is quite small. All right, next one. We want to find the 65th percentile. Hmm. All right, so we know that n is equal to 1,009. We're looking for a percentile. And then, um, yeah, so let's see here. If we want to find a percentile, we're going to use inverse norm. And if we want the 65th percentile, let's think about that. 50 percentile would be um, from the 
midline on, right? This would be the 50th percentile. As a matter of fact, that's how we define the median, which is at the mean in a symmetric distribution, which this is. So we want to go past that. We want to go out here. This area is 0.65. And when they ask you for the 65th percentile, they're asking you, where is this falling? Where is this line over here? Well, we would use inverse norm. That's what the graph, the decision matrix just showed us. Inverse norm, left tail area, so 0.65, and then the mean of our distribution, which is P, right? That's what that is. So it's mu sub P hat, which is P, which is 0.58, right? This isn't gonna change for this whole problem. Those values, once you find them, they hold true for this entire problem until you get to the next problem <laughs> where they change. And then this is the sigma p hat right here. That's what I'm using. Okay. All right. And then of course, if you have a new calculator, you're using a left because that's a left area that you're shading. Percentiles are always the percentage that's below you. We learned that in chapter three. So second distribution, number three, 0 0.65, 0 0.58, 0 0.015538, leave it as a left, and paste. And we get 0.586, roughly, 0.58598. So p hat is 0 0.586, if we round that. In stat crunch, I would leave the X bar part alone. So that part in the parentheses. So P parentheses X bar, that's not the part I'm looking for. What I want is for it to be 0.65. I want that area to be 0.65. And you can see it's 0.585. It's to the right of 5.8 because 5.8 is the middle line. So it makes sense, right? We're past the mean, right? 58 is the mean and we're past that in order to get 65% to the left. And the graph does pretty much look like the graph I shaded. So that's good. Right? I'm a little bit further over than I should be, probably. All right, suppose you conduct your own poll of 1,009 random adult Americans. Would it be unusual? Hmm. That's less than 5%. Remember that. That should set off little bells in your head. Right? Unusual is less than 5% or more than two standard deviations away. So would it be unusual to find more than 61.2% of them supporting a ban on public smoking? All right, so let's see here. 61.2, that would be p hat is 0.612, right? That's a little hat right there. So 0.612 would be over here somewhere. So here's p hat, which is 0.612. And I want to shade to the right of that. And I'm looking for this area. Okay. I'm looking for a percent, right? In order to determine unusual, if I want to compare to 5%, I need to find a percent so I can compare it to 5%. So I'm going to use normal CDF, right? It's going to be a probability question. So normal CDF, 0 0.612, 0 0.612, comma, 1E99, because I'm shading off into that tail, and then yet again, one, one more time, last time on this video, 0 0.58 and 0 0.015538. Um, I'll grab stack crunch first this time. So I want to make it a greater than, and I want to make it 0 0.612 enter. So it's a little bitty tail. I actually probably don't have enough shaded, but it gets me 0 0.01978. All right, so then on the calculator, it would be normal CDF, 0.612, 1 second, comma, 99, then 0.58, and then 0 0.015538. Paste and press enter. So there you go. Either way you want to do it, it's fine, either way. Okay, so then... Actually, let me fit this in over here, 0 0.01978. There we go. Because that's not really the answer to the question, so I don't want to box it and circle it as if it is. 
The question was, is this unusual? And the answer is yes, <laughs> this would be unusual because the probability of this happening is 0 0.01978, which is less than 0 0.05. And I ran out of space, one second. There. And that's our threshold for unusual, at least right now, it's 5%. So if we're less than 5%, we will consider that unusual. Now, suppose it happens. Suppose what we just said was unusual, and it's quite unusual. That's a pretty small probability. Suppose it occurs, right? And sorry, that should be part G. That was a typo. All right, so what are three conclusions we could draw? Well, number one, it could be a bad sample. We could have a biased sample. Uh, maybe we just happen to hit a whole bunch of people that hate smoking. <laughs> so... Um, sample has a lot of people with lung problems accidentally or a lot of people who um, have lost um, family to lung cancer or something like that think of some weirdo scenario that would make your sample weird um, sample um, is all related to each other somehow and all related to Um, a bunch of relatives to a cancer patient, to a lung cancer patient, or something like that. Or a bunch of lung cancer patients. Pick, pick your poison, right? So some kind of weird sample. That's all one type of conclusion you could draw. You've got a weird sample, a bad sample, something's not random, right? So a bias sample, it wasn't random, something, something weird went on. Maybe you got a bunch of young people or old people or who knows? Who knows who smokes more or doesn't smoke more these days? All right, so that's a bias sample. Now, we kind of say, yeah, it could happen. It actually happens a lot in real life, but we cannot mathematically deal with it if it happens. There's really not much we can do. So we kind of, unfortunately, ignore it in this class and say, yeah, 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 okay, that's good. <laughs> but, but that's not what's going to happen to us. No, 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 no. It's got to be some other problem because we really cannot deal with it if it's a bias sample. We have no mathematical tools. So then the other problem it can be is a fluke. By random chance, we just had a high sample, right? A high persona in our sample. So the probability that p hat is greater than 0 0.612 is 0 0.01978. That's the probability of a fluke. So the probability of a fluke, a random chance, was what we found above. It's the 0 0.01978. It could happen, right? So this is, you took a bad sample. This is just bad stuff happens, right? Weird stuff happens in real life. Life is messy, right? Data are messy. Um, and sometimes you just end up with a really high sample by accident, right? Through no fault of anybody's. All right. And then last bit, you assumed a parameter. And maybe that assumption that you assumed, which is a little bit redundant, is incorrect. So the parameter is wrong. Now, I didn't say parameters. 8.1 has parameters, but 8.2 only has a single parameter. Everything we built in this entire problem over two pages was built off of one thing. It's right there. That P was 0.58. P is 0.58 gives us our standard error, and it gives us all these probabilities. Everything is built up on that 0.58. So if that P equals 0.58 is wrong, or was never right to begin with, or has changed. Right, we don't know which case it might be. It might be that it was correct at some point. It might be that it was never correct. That's the third possibility, that that parameter we assumed is either wrong or has changed. Those are the three basic conclusions we could draw 
and we will start drawing them in chapter nine, chapters 9, 10, and 11. This is the basis of inferential statistics. If number one is out, then that might mean number two, and if number two has got a probability that's low enough, then our bet is probably number three.